You see, there's somebody who wants to meet you. You don't know him? No. But you took his name, and now he wants it back. No, <laughs> sorry. I still don't get it. It is Western Sydney, home to the newest edition of the Marvel movie franchise. The Seven News Chopper captured these scenes today. As work resumed building the set for the upcoming production, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's understood that all cast and crew have now arrived from overseas and after completing their required quarantine, shooting will begin in the coming days, 18 weeks later than originally planned. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. So we have a brand new Marvel Shang-Chi clip to break down. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on with the movie because Marvel's starting to film all their movies again. Thankfully, things are getting going. So we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing an Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with the Shang-Chi character in Marvel Phase 4. So the new Marvel clip and the new scenes that they dropped here are just part of their real MCU Mandarin story. The fact that it's a traditional Asian village with no signs of modern technology probably means that it's most likely for flashback scenes explaining the origin story of the real Mandarin in his rise to power in his quest to acquire the Ten Rings of Power and then forming the actual Ten Rings organization that we've seen in all the Iron Man movies. There have been a lot of jokes in the Iron Man movies about the Ten Rings themselves. Are they real? Are they not real? The movie itself will actually canonize the actual comic book Ten Rings. They are real and they'll be trying to find them through the course of the film. But that just implies that at the beginning of the movie, the Mandarin doesn't actually possess all ten of them. Maybe he has a couple of them. But if you're not really familiar with the character, Shang-Chi himself as a character was created to be Marvel's Bruce Lee, basically. He debuted in the comics in 1973 during the big Marvel Kung Fu craze that was sweeping pop culture at the time, thanks to people like Bruce Lee in real life. Be formless, shapeless, like water. 1973 is also the same year that they released Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon, so no coincidence there. The Shang-Chi movie is designed to be like Marvel's version of Enter the Dragon, but with an actual real dragon like Fing Fang Foom in the movie. I know everyone's been hoping that they actually include Fing Fang Foom in some big movie at some point. We never thought that we'd see him, but it seems like the Shang-Chi franchise is the perfect place to put him. They're also doing the tournament arc a la Enter the Dragon with the evil bondish villain, which is obviously the MCU Mandarin in this case, with a vast empire trying to acquire more power, and the one dude, Shang-Chi, who has a chance to stop him with some help from friends that he makes through the tournament. They've already changed a lot about the Mandarin of the MCU and the Ten Rings through the Iron Man movies, but the Shang-Chi movie will just recontextualize a lot of the stuff that we've seen and heard about them so far and reveal the truth of what's been going on in all those Iron Man movies. These are all the Mandarin references and Ten Rings references that we've had so far. They call themselves the Ten Rings. You're not him, the Mandarin, the real guy. Where? You said you wanted the Mandarin. You're looking right at him. It was always me, Tony. Right from the start. I am the Mandarin! Ten rings, are they real? It's well documented. You mean to tell me that you don't know the history of the Mandarin himself? He was a warrior king. He inspired generations of men through the Middle Ages. Perhaps even further back in time. Not the Mandarin they'll remember. It's the name. Trevor Slattery. You're right. And for that sin, you will soon suffer horribly with a hole in your body for every ring of our faith. Some of you may remember Kevin Feige talking about the Mandarin of the MCU way back, I think it was in 2006. It was the year before Marvel did their big Iron Man panel. Kevin Feige had been talking about the movie hyping it up because Marvel was getting ready to film it and go into production. He said that the main villain of the movie would be the Mandarin. Obviously, things did not go down that way. Obadiah Stane wound up being the villain of that first Iron Man film. And Kevin Feige himself will joke about that too, just explaining how sometimes during the production process and development, their movies will change a lot from start to finish. But right now in the MCU, canonically, the real Mandarin is a warlord who rose to power, formed the Ten Rings organization, and then created several splinter cells operating independently from the main Ten Rings group throughout history, predating most of the Marvel movies. In that clip from Marvel's one-shot All Hail the King, when the reporter is taunting Trevor in prison, they're saying some claim that he's ancient and has lived for centuries, 
Some say he's even older than that, wink wink. That's just their way of acknowledging the comic book Mandarin's backstory. Because in the comics, the Mandarin started out just as this normal person a long time ago who found the wreckage of a crashed alien ship. The alien race were a bunch of big space dragons and their ship was powered by the Ten Rings. The rings were alive, they're sentient, just like Thor's hammer is in the comics. They changed their size automatically to fit his fingers, then he went on to use their power to gain immortality and near limitless power. The Ten Rings themselves aren't more powerful than the Infinity Gauntlet, but they're sort of an Infinity Gauntlet-like story device. You can think of them as a MacGuffin through the Shang-Chi movie. They're still crazy powerful, like near Infinity Stone levels of power, such that if the MCU version of the Mandarin ever acquired all Ten Rings, he'd be unstoppable for the most part, given that most of the Avengers have disbanded temporarily and the other more powerful characters, like say Captain Marvel, are busy off in Kree and Skrull space dealing with their own problems. Way too busy, as she says, to come out and help on planet Earth. So the Shang-Chi movie is just meant to dispel all the false myths and tell the real story of the true Mandarin of the MCU. But even though there'll probably be some comedic aspects to the film and the Shang-Chi character, like Shang-Chi as a character himself does have a good sense of humor, I don't think they'll be playing the real MCU Mandarin for comedy near the way that they did the Trevor character. So in that way, I think that most of the stuff that's been said about the real MCU Mandarin will actually wind up being true, just to make him seem more fearsome. They don't want to turn him into a joke like Trevor. Right now, the rumor is that Aquafina is actually going to be playing his daughter in the film and she'll wind up becoming Shang-Chi's main side piece, his best girl, and will wind up helping him stop her father from acquiring all Ten Rings. But at the beginning of the movie, he'll be tasking her with tracking down the rest of the Ten Rings and Shang-Chi will just get caught up in the chase for the Ten Rings through the tournament arc. So if you haven't seen Enter the Dragon, the villain holds this big Mortal Kombat-like tournament on a private island every once in a while. It's by invitation only, but the prize is so huge that all the best fighters around the world go crazy for a chance to participate. Then Shang-Chi just manages to score an invite to that tournament and uses it as an excuse to try and infiltrate the Mandarin's organization and find out what's going on with the Ten Rings. There'll be a ton of Iron Man Easter eggs, as you would expect, since the Mandarin is an Iron Man character originally, but there have been a lot of rumors about when the movie takes place in the MCU timeline. They're getting really crazy with some of these Marvel Phase 4 movies, like the Eternals movie takes place simultaneously thousands of years ago because the characters are so ancient, but also in present day after Avengers Endgame. Then you also have stuff like the Black Widow movie, which takes place before Avengers Infinity War, but after Captain America Civil War. So some movies in Marvel Phase 4 will be set during different parts of the timeline, and I'll just explain where everything fits when we get those trailers. The rumor right now, though, is that Shang-Chi actually takes place in that five-year time gap after the snap in Avengers Infinity War, but before Avengers Endgame. The five-year time gap is a really interesting period in MCU history because the Avengers were fractured even though some of them were still on planet Earth, Black Widow still trying to keep the peace with other major heroes left around the world like in Wakanda, but all that chaos around the world creates a lot of opportunity for MCU villains to take advantage of. Everyone post all your Game of Thrones little finger memes. Chaos is a ladder. Even though most of you probably already assumed, Marvel and Kevin Feige have implied that Shang-Chi would be in Avengers 5. They're meant to put him on a new Avengers team when they get ready to make another one. That movie won't be happening till deep in Marvel Phase 5 though, so it's still a long ways off. But most of Marvel Phase 4 right now is them introducing new Avengers level characters like Kit Harington's Black Knight in the Eternals movie setting the stage for more big cosmic MCU threats. And even though Shang-Chi is very much a Marvel Kung Fu action movie, a lot of you are like, what is the connection between, say, like, Shang-Chi and Fantastic Four, big cosmic MCU Galactus stuff? Think about it this way. The Ten Rings of Power are actually the Ten Alien Rings of Power. Like, the Infinity Stones wound up on planet Earth. There's a very cosmic story behind how the MCU versions of the Ten Rings wound up on planet Earth. So that's sort of the backdoor connection between Shang-Chi and the space-based cosmic Marvel movies. So there's going to be a ton of Marvel and Spider-Man related movies happening early next year, meaning a ton of big Marvel trailers coming later this year. I know you're all still waiting for a new Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer. There's also supposed to be a Star Wars Mandalorian Season 2 trailer sometime in the next couple of weeks. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. Congratulations, Wes Stapley. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for that brand new Benedict Cumberbatch Doctor Strange 2 clip and click here to learn about the new Marvel Phase 4 movies that they're bringing Thanos back for. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.